Hello everybody, I'm Morgan Park, staff writer at PC Gamer, and I'm here with Tyler Polk, an associate editor. And uh, we played Overwatch 2. We've actually had access to Overwatch 2 for a little bit now, the closed yeah, alpha. A couple weeks. Yeah. yeah. We're both pretty experienced Overwatch players, Tyler more than myself. I stick in quick play as a rule with, with some friends. Yeah. Kind of, and Even I do. A more. Yeah. Quick play all the way. Yeah. It's just more fun. Um, yeah. <laughs> Quick play is mostly what we played in the alpha, which at the time that we were playing was limited to a pretty small pool, some other press, um, but mostly pro players and friends and family of Blizzard. And so, yeah, let's first cover what exactly was in the alpha. It was just like quick playing custom games, I believe. Right. Yeah. We were able to go into shooting range and try out heroes and we were able yeah, to match made. The real meat of the, of the alpha here was just to try out all the hero reworks. I think that was the biggest thing. And obviously it's 5v5 now. Uh, so I think we should just go right into 5v5 because like everything we're gonna talk about sort of branches off of that major change. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah if you haven't played the game in a long time, it's, it's obviously Overwatch 1 is still 6v6. 5v5 just changes that to obviously be five players in each team and then it just limits you to one tank per team, which is a pretty big change because a lot of the tanks a lot of, like, I guess the community thought of tanks as sort of off tanks and main tanks, which have, like, you know, tanks that sort of have shields versus ones that don't. And now every tank is a solo tank, right? You never have another player helping you out, um, which really kind of changes the way the game flows, I would say. Like, I mean, even just early on in the alpha, the game just felt faster to me, um, especially with the way they've reworked a lot of the tanks, having just a lot more mobility and survivability because you know they would have to without another tank helping out the team yeah i i agree it, it felt faster it also just felt awkward it was hard to get it yeah it's hard to get your bearings when you've been playing 6v6 for so long um because as much as people hate playing tank it's like the least cued role by far and 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 it shows it's it's weird to to lose one of them because they're kind of the foundation of the team uh they're like but yeah you're, you you mentioned the game, the current game, Overwatch 1, has this concept of main tanks and off tanks. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't really know this stuff all that well, but uh, the main tank is typically your your barrier, your Sigma mm -hmm. or your Arisa or your Reinhardt, which Reinhardt's the best, of, yeah. of just putting a wall between you and players that they just have to shoot to get down. And right. off tanks, uh, as, as my friends like to call them, are the fun tanks. The, the tanks that uh, get to do get to play a little bit more like a DPS damage hero that um, sets up kills for other people. I think that has been something that people were worried about when they heard that there was only one tank, because they thought like, well, what happens to to main tank players? And it's like those those heroes are still in the game. They just play a lot more like an off tank, right? Every every tank is now more fun. I mean, depending on how you feel, but yeah, they're all a lot more engaging to play. Yeah. So five v five v five. It's, it's weird because it has implications for everything, right? Healers have one fewer teammates to focus on. Uh, not only that, but one fewer, like, meaty teammate to focus yeah. on. The, the, you know, it used to be more, to, it used to be a lot to juggle two tanks with huge health pools that are almost dying. Um, now you just have, sort of have your one beefy character and then your little smaller ones are going around. But it also makes, you know, the healers more vulnerable in theory because... Um, combination of there being one fewer tank and fewer tanks with barriers, which we'll get to, um, means that there's just fewer things between Mercy and, you know, an Ash in the back wanting the headshot. Yeah, or Tracer. Tracer was, yeah. seemed, just, they even nerfed her, I think, a little bit. It was, it was very, it's, she was very powerful because there just isn't, like, you know, when, when Diva is the solo tank, she can't break off from, you know, pushing the front line to peel as easily. So peel, which is generally just means like, you know, helping out a teammate, generally healers. Uh, that just happens less often now. But I guess the the flip side of that is that the enemy team also doesn't have peel, right? So like your DPS can do the same thing. So I think what happens is with 5v5 for me in those games that we played and which felt sort of like kind of average skill level. I mean, obviously sometimes we were going against people that were pretty good, but it felt like, um, it felt more definitive. Like the fights seem to end really quickly. Like I feel like there's a lot of fights in Overwatch One where you have a team fight and you're sort of maybe you your team kills three people out of six, 
and maybe the other three people sort of kind of back up or go back to spawn or wait. And it feels like in a lot of the, at least especially like the new mode push, it, you just clean out the entire team. You wipe them out every single time. The fights just everyone dies and has to respawn, which just it's it's a little bit of an adjustment because it, it has implications too for like ult charge and everything too. I think that's a good way to put it. Obviously, we can't be sure because we're not playing yeah. in a live environment, but I think that at least will ring true when we get into normal play because there's just less sustain now. There's one fewer character yep. that's designed to live. Um, mm -hmm. and, and by design, less protection. Um, and so, yeah, for now, it's just, it, it seems like we're getting more like MOBA-style team fights where it's just decided. There's no, there, there is no like peeling off and, and, and the hunting back down or meeting back up, typically. Um, right. It, it, just, it just seems like it's all or nothing when there's just fewer shields, really, to keep people alive. And uh, I, I really want to hammer in on that because at, in, in, in the alpha we played, there were essentially two barrier heroes, if I'm, unless, <laughs> yeah. I'm, unless I'm remembering somebody, or forgetting somebody, but there's Sigma, who still works as he used to, and Reinhardt, whose shield still works as he used to, but now he has more reason to lower the shield and just keep brawling. Um, yeah. Orisa has been completely reworked. She is essentially a different hero. Yeah, um, in a lot of ways. Yeah, she doesn't have a shield. She doesn't have a shield. Barriers gone. There's, <laughs> yeah. She, no more barriers. So you know, have fun with that ability while you can. Um, her new main, I guess, ability is her uh, javelin spear that she throws. Uh, mm -hmm. Her right click is this pretty far-reaching uh, javelin that that hits an enemy, pushes them, which. Is yeah, like, I thought it was just the spear throw, but it's like when you get like you get like um, impaled into the wall. <laughs> it's yeah, kind exactly. of surprising. It's a knockback. Yeah. It's a it's pretty good damage. It's really good for executing smaller characters. It's kind of like your 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 closer if you can actually hit it. Um, yeah. But the challenge reminds is me of it. like um, soldiers heal helix rockets, right? Like it's a finisher. Exactly. Yeah, which is cool to have on a tank. I mean, yeah, this is if, if you're wondering. An example of Blizzard trying to make these tanks more deadly. This is that. This is a tank being able to essentially close a fight like a DPS in ways they have haven't really before. Um, and it's also just it's a really fun. I, I it's really yeah, fun. Yeah, they really to, transformed the the Arisa. Yeah. yeah, like Arisa felt like I mean they called her like an anchor tank, which is really just a way of saying like it's a slow moving tank that has lots of damage and mitigation. And now she has some of that mitigation, but she even has, I don't i don't remember the name of the ability, but the thing where she like spins the, the javelin around. Yeah, we should, I really, think it's, we should yeah. really have to know the names of those. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember the names. Um, and maybe they're subject to change because it is an alpha, but uh, it, it was sort of like a defense matrix in a way. So it kind of like eats enemy abilities or shots, um, but it would also like slightly knock people away and it would make you go faster as a reset. So you could like rush the front line with this spinning thing and it just felt it it felt kind of absurd but it was also like yeah. oh yeah they would have to do this to a tank that is so slow when there's only one yeah it feels a little silly but you're right it is it's kind of a little catch-up mechanic to catch a try to catch like a tracer that's running away maybe yeah but yeah it is also a defense matrix it lasts probably half as long as diva's full right defense yeah. matrix but um that also means that it's probably more timing based and you can really get good at it and counter like very specific attacks you think are about to roll in like a yeah. Hanzo arrow or something. Every, yeah, every Pretty much every ability is different on her except for Fortify. She still presses Fortify, uh, probably still gets the same damage mitigation maybe. I, yeah, game. it felt the same. But more importantly she can't be moved, um, she can't be pushed or anything during that which is uh, good if you like Arisa as she is. Her uh, primary fire, her gun, is is totally different. She shoots these like yeah. plas plasma orbs now instead of bullets. Yeah. Um, uh, they and seem like to... overheats. You don't reload. Yeah, there's no reload. It's a, yeah. just just an overheat. Um, so you can just sort of manage that and never have to reload, which is good with me because her reload's always been yes. super long <laughs> and annoying. Um, and yeah, they. I don't know if they travel faster, but they're bigger projectiles. So they're definitely bigger. I don't know if they, they're faster or slower, but they're big. So she's just more deadly. I mean, she's straight up like she's like Zarya. She's a she's a big yeah. target to shoot at. That also is plenty capable of killing you in the right conditions.
Uh, let's see, let's, we should move along a bit faster with these. I, I, I want to hit Doomfist. Doomfist needs plenty of attention because he's the only character on the roster who has switched roles. He is no longer DPS, he is a tank. He's a tank. Uh, I, I, I I play DPS quite a bit in the, or it's not DPS, Doomfist in the um, alpha, and I'm sort of torn on him because he is a lot more approachable, which is a good thing because I think a lot of people think Doomfist is, I mean, he's a really cool character. He's like a fighting game character, melee based, and a shooter. That's kind of wild. Um, and now he, he's a little bit different. He has like a, his leap, or he has sort of a leap that's like Winston. I forget the name of the ability now. It's like it's usually his E or like one of his like first abilities um, that lands on people. Now it does like a big like 360 degree like sort of slam on people and still gives them shields. Um, and then like his punch is a lot weaker now. It doesn't one shot characters. It does a lot of damage, but it's it's mostly seems to be about sort of uh, knocking them back because he just has more health by default now. Um, and then the other thing with him is that he has the ability to sort of like put up his fist and block a bunch of damage and then that powers up the fist and then that lets you essentially like punch multiple people at once so it sort of knocks everybody back. They did, I think they did a really smart job of figuring out what the core of Doomfist is about which is like getting into the fight like by leaping in and then like punching somebody and you know basically like creating chaos and then you know being sort of weak like he is sort of the weaker tank out of all the other ones. Um, in Overwatch 2, but like he still has that ability of like being very like mobile and like he loses uppercut and he has the same ultimate, but he just feels very kinetic, I guess. Um, my, my problem, I think, with him for me was it just sort of he loses that like lethality that he has. Obviously, he's not a DPS anymore, but I think like one of the things I really enjoyed about Doomfist in the live game is that it felt very like risk reward um, for such like a unique character. Um, which it, it reminded me a lot of like Genji, right? Like another sort of semi melee based character. Um, and I feel like Doomfist sort of loses that when he is a tank, though it might be a generally healthier decision to make him more manageable and not gonna like instantly kill you because I think a lot of people get frustrated. And I, even myself, like I think the character as a DPS has always needed something. And I think switching him to an entire different role is is a way to fix that. Not sure it's my favorite way, but we'll see how it plays out as more people get hands on him. Yeah, I've definitely been the one that's frustrated that Doomfist is like this other, completely other play style I have to work around. And like, if a Doomfist is good, they're like the most annoying person on the map, as far <laughs> yeah. as I'm concerned. You don't even um, know, like, where'd you even come from? You landed from like a different map. Right, like if you don't learn to yeah. track them in the air as they're uppercutting you, then he just gets to kill you. Um, so in that sense, I'm glad that's not long, no longer a thing, although... It wasn't really like wrecking my enjoyment of Overwatch, and so far it just seems kind of awkward as a tank person. Yeah, it, it, it feels weird to adapt like so many of his moves into the tank role, where he knows no longer as much of a killer. Like it, it right. is a crucial thing you mentioned that he can no longer just instant kill someone with a fist. That's like his whole thing. That was his whole thing. Um, like I, I, it, one of the things I think about Doomfist is like I think he's so fascinating as a character in the first game is because. You have a character like Widowmaker that like instantly kills someone with a headshot, right? But I thought it was always really fascinating that they made a melee based character that feels like a sniper character, a one shot character, but he's like he gets in and he gets out. And I thought I just think that like playstyle is something you just don't see in shooters like that. And he he doesn't he doesn't have that anymore, but he does like they made a lot of his tank abilities low cooldown, so it kind of feel like it has the feeling of it, but it does you don't have that like reward of like getting a really clean kill and then getting out. It feels like your the reward is like you know helping your team by just engaging and making space, yeah. Which is just a different type of reward. And then the other big thing that we probably should have started with is Sojourn, uh, the only yeah. the only brand new hero that we had access to. Um, perhaps the only one that will be in the in the upcoming beta as well, but we're not sure. We really yeah, been communicative on that. Uh, but she is a brand new DPS hero. Um, I think. It, <laughs> She seems like a pretty even split between like a soldier, 76, and um, I guess Ash or Widowmaker. Mm -hmm. she's, she's a little bit of sniper in her, a little, um, little bit of soldier. Her primary fire is this railgun that left clip shoots just a stream of machine gun bullets. Um, not unlike soldier in appearance, but honestly more like old Orisa. In that yeah, they are projectile. They're not like hit scan. Yeah, she's not. She, yeah, her left foot is not hit scan, um, and it's also not terribly accurate or long range. So you really have to get in there, lead shots, um, but the whole, uh, as long as you are hitting something, um, you are charging her right click, which is her really main ability, which, 
the railgun. If you charge it up to about 80 or 100, which only takes a few seconds of so continuous fire, then a solid railgun shot will like half kill or mostly kill a DPS hero. Yeah, head and then shot. headshots. Yeah, headshot. headshots so. Yeah, and a headshot will kill them, pretty much. A full charged headshot to anyone that isn't a taint is, is almost surely death. Um, and the railgun shot, the right click, is its jam. Yeah, her, it, it, she's really cool, she's really mobile, and she's actually pretty simple. Uh, I've kind of always, I've been waiting a long time for another character that kind of feels like Soldier. Um, just someone that is easy to just jump into and dump bullets into people. Um, because when you think about it, it's like it's Soldier and it's Sombra that do that. And Sombra is like this yeah. whole other thing where you have to really be playing a stealth game, which I've never been big on. Uh, so I like yeah. Soldier. I like Soldier a lot, and I like the sort of like I think people call it the pop-off potential of uh, being able to just charge up a shot, get a headshot, and, and just end a fight instantly. It kind of has that Widowmaker feel, or that Ash feel, um, when you're, as long as you're accurate. Um, yeah, you definitely just, like, because her ultimate just allows you to do multiple of those right clicks, those railgun shots, and the, the, you can just miss them all. <laughs> so yeah, exactly. it's definitely skill-based. It's funny how modest the design is in some ways. Like it sound, it might sound powerful when we're describing it, but like in play, you like. There's, I feel like there was a lot of times where you know, obviously this will be based on your skill, but it's like you build up that right click and then you miss it, and that's like not bad necessarily, but it is just sort of part of her play style, of like kind of building up to this like big shot, and if you and maybe you shoot a tank and it doesn't even kill them, yeah. So it feels if you like can, um, if you can shoot full, if you can shoot like six shots while you have it. I think they only really expect you to land one or two, and that'll actually be exactly. worth worthwhile. Yeah. That's a good ult to kill on a few of them. So she's not like incredibly overpowered. Like she, like compared to something like Echo, which is the last hero we got several years ago, yeah. uh, you know, she doesn't turn into something you know completely different in her you know ultimate, or she doesn't have this kit that it just feels so powerful that she can do everything. So that's one of the problems with a lot of the new heroes is they just have the ability to do everything, and they sort of outshine um, the you know the older roster. Like you look at something like Cassidy. He just looks like a joke compared to like a character that can fly around the map, right? Um, and so it's interesting that Sojourn just feels sort of pretty, like basic but not in a bad way. It feels sort of like constrained or a lot closer to heroes that already exist um, versus like really trying to like break the mold in some weird way. It feels like, it just feels modest to me, I'm surprised, but it's also like they have like 30 heroes. At some point, they're probably not gonna have something that is as wild as like a new fist or a wrecking ball to release it's true yeah i mean it, she is she is more similar to yours in the past her her mobility option is actually pretty pretty all-encompassing like she uh, yeah she presses shift to instantly um uh, what's it called slide, slide. In, in in any direction so this rocket propelled slide that's really quick um uh and she can chain, she can just slide if she wants, or she can jump at the end of a slide or at any time during the slide to chain it into a jump that is like at least, uh, at least it's like high. the, it, it's tall enough to get to any rooftop that you Yeah, pretty to, much. Like, it feels like if it's not as long as a Baptiste, like charged up jump, it's close. It's very close. Yeah. And, and you can he, shoot during all of that. Like you can shoot while you're sliding too. I don't have, like, it doesn't feel like a Genji dash where you can't do anything. Like you can do all this stuff, which is neat. Yeah, exactly. Anywhere that you would usually grapple up to to shoot as Widow or yeah. uh, or put a teleporter up to, you can probably just get there doing her jump. She's turned out to be one of my favorites early on just because I like playing Soldier and there's finally another Soldier. Uh, we we got to keep moving here. We got Push Mode. Yeah. Um, push Mode. Push. It, so yeah, the Push Mode is coming in at the same time that... Uh, uh, what is it called? Two point or two? Uh, what's the mode? That's... They're getting rid of what is it called? It's uh, assault. Assault, I think, is what the two yeah. CP is. What two CP? Call it, but, two CP yeah. is out the door, as yeah, far as gone. as far as we know. Which is kind of strange because it also means a bunch of maps are out the door. <laughs> like yeah, you can't... I think they said they might turn those into PVE modes, like it were the maps for those. But yeah, they're gone. Like Anubis, Temple of Anubis, gone. Horizon, Lunar Colony, gone. Yeah, these like maps that whatever you think of two CP, which it sucks. Uh, the, the maps themselves, the motifs, like all the, the visuals that we're used to are just like out the door. And coming in are like a handful of push mode maps. And push is like this weird sort of uh, a hybrid payload map where like there's yeah. basic, like dueling payloads essentially. Uh, fighting over the control of this one robot that 
goes back and forth both ways in a line. Yeah, uh, the maps pushing. are mirrored, so it feels like, like to me, it felt like um, a control point map, but like the moving, like it was like a moving control point. You're fighting over this like thing that is this like point that's moving back and forth over this middle part of the map. That's the best um, way to put it. Yeah, ultimately, yeah. whoever is standing near the robot longest is gonna win. Um, but the robot just moves, so you have to yeah. fight. And and the map, I think the the mode is less interesting than the map design here because uh, the maps are obviously completely designed around this mode, and like I just said that way they're mirrored uh, yeah. exactly in a way that other maps are never mirrored um, for for the other modes. And they've also they've talked about before they designed a lot of these in like sort of S patterns um, with the mirroring, yeah. and it results in in maps that they've set or designed to like be very flankable. Uh, they are. They definitely like, are. <laughs> it's like the opposite of um, yeah. the Dark Caleb map. It's, it's basically the oh, opposite. Oh, King's Row. Of, yeah, King's Row. It's the yeah. opposite of King's Row, um, which is like known as like the most linear, most like condensed right. the little yeah. single lane payload. This is like the robots over here, but there's actually like a bunch of stuff going on over here that that yeah, that it, it's you not. Never it's, feel safe. Like there's people coming behind you all. In a lot of our games, it felt like. At all degrees around you, people were, could show up, and they would because it was like you needed to do that to actually win right. the point. It, yeah, and, and other modes like there are side rooms, obviously, and, the, and those are flanking right. routes, but but they're pretty closed off, and they're basically just another way to get to the main battleground. Like, it, but in these push maps, it seems like there's like these long sight lines from like really far away. Like the robot might be over here, but there's no reason someone can't just be like on the other side of the map, essentially shooting you. Uh, and so it's, yeah. It's the most chaotic. I mean, part of it, it's like grain of salt because everybody is playing an alpha. They've never played Overwatch 2 before, and it's 5v5. There's lots of changes. So, like, maybe it'll calm down with, you know, the beta and the, the launch of the game. But, yeah, it felt like the most chaotic mode. Like, I didn't even know. Like, I got lost in, like, where my team was spawning, you know, and, like, where the enemy team was going to come at us from. Even though they, those don't change, I don't believe. Or maybe, I don't think they do. I don't think the spawn points change. I don't think maybe the maps do. big enough for them to. Yeah. yeah. Um, Maybe. But it just felt like it just you never felt safe. So it definitely felt like as a five v five, it just felt sort of more like a death match in a way, where it's like there was teamwork happening. Everybody was trying to like you know eliminate the enemy team, but it seemed like you had to sort of like gravitate and sort of orbit around each other. That's what it felt like to me. It was it wasn't necessarily like pushing a choke point. Because one of the things with Overwatch is like a lot of maps just have like these choke points that are these like either a doorway that you got to push through or like something under a bridge. And there's choke points in the map. I mean, like, the, that's sort of, like, you know, core to Overwatch's design. But it just felt like because the robot was moving back and forth, you had these, like, team fights happening on the top of the building, on like, on the bottom of these stairs or, like, under an overpass or anything like that. Like, it just felt like it was all over the place. And, again, like, that stuff will probably work itself out over time. But my first impression was, like, I don't know what's going on. I don't even know, like, sometimes I wasn't even sure when we were winning or not. Like, it felt like... If there's anything, any criticism to have about push is that the way it sort of conveys this, like your progress in the map, it, it has like a marker up top of like where, how far each team pushed the uh, the robot, but it, it never yeah. felt exactly like clear who was winning. No, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah, it is confusing. Like even the the object that the robot's pushing itself um, is just this like stack of blocks like it's not it's not, <laughs> yeah. it's not yeah. some super noticeable payload um or, or central figure it's just like it's pushing a little and then wall yeah and there's like overtime and then like I, I mean all this stuff could probably just be figured out with time but it was just very confusing of like oh do someone, someone has to stay on it but then if you leave obviously you would lose if maybe you didn't push it far enough it's it's, it's a little confusing it's not as obvious if as capture a point and win or get a percentage up to 100 percent and win main impression so far is that this is like for people that haven't played the game in a long time um i think you'll jump into this and it'll basically just feel like more overwatch with a, with a new character um and i think it is better so far at least in, in terms of just like small uh, polishing that they've done um but if you've been playing overwatch in the years since it came out um you're gonna feel really messed up getting into this like it is it is weird um, everything looks the same, but nothing feels the same. Um, yeah, it really, it cuts out a lot of the fat in the game. It feels like, or really tightens it up. Like the, like I said, if the fights are more definitive. It feels like stuff is just more lethal. It's a little bit more chaotic. I think some of that chaos, like chaos, is obviously because people don't aren't really used to the game. But it does just feel like the the teamwork seems to be more implied in the fact that like everyone has these tools to sort of eliminate people, and they're not necessarily 
it feels like, like, like one of the things that I noticed when I was playing like on a healer, it felt like, yeah, I was healing people occasionally, but generally I was also trying to get kills, right? And, that, and that's like a high level thing in current Overwatch, but it feels like they sort of brought down that kind of like lethality to sort of a more average play style. Uh, where everyone is try has like the ability and should be trying to kill enemy team members and you're not able to just like heal someone unless you're playing like a hero like Mercy. Like a lot of these characters have the ability to deal damage as well as their like, you know, what their role sort of is usually supposed to be for. So that is the Overwatch 2 Alpha. We have the beta coming up in just a few days after this is going up. Um, yep. That starts on the 26th, I believe. Uh, Blizzard is, you know, allowing in what sounds like a lot of people but certainly not everybody that signs up so good luck out there um uh, we don't actually know what's going to be in that if it's going to be any different from what we have but we basically just had a quick play button and a bunch of heroes uh yeah. hero changes so <laughs> yep. uh, good luck I, with, uh, I think they'll be updating it over time right i think i think they'll i assume they'll be adding heroes almost like a regular release is like they did with the overwatch one beta but we'll see they haven't said that so that's what i hope that's what i'm looking out for the most i mean change yeah. like, important changes are cool i want to see more actual new heroes so hopefully yeah because that that's what it will because i think a lot of what we talked about today is it, it feels sort of like overwatch 1.5 which yeah. i mean maybe is a little harsh but it feels like that it's no, in some ways it's not harsh yeah. that's what it is i mean <laughs> it is yeah I, I, I'm, I'm comfortable saying like this shouldn't have been lauded as a this at least this part of the game the pvp updates are not overwatch 2. this is a really huge patch that's sort of like a bunch of changes that have, they've been sort of saving up uh, for a long time um and we'll see we'll see about the other half of the game that i've right I, oh yeah pve yeah pve that, that's coming at some point in the future it seems like blizzard is just wanting to get pvp changes out the door so that overwatch is more of a living game um yeah so if, i think it's a good time to jump back in probably if um if you if you get into the beta and if you've been playing Overwatch the whole time, like, get ready for a new game, essentially. Yeah, uh, finally new things to play with. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, uh, thank you, Tyler, for joining me, and I uh, hope this helps everybody. Good luck in the beta. Bye.